Some say I made this video as an excuse to use synth pop background music. Maybe that's true, or maybe it isn't. You see, I've been having a lot of fun with this French LED watch that looks like something straight out of Cyberpunk 2077 or Blade Runner. And before you ask, yes, it does work. You just have to give it a bit of juice. So how did this end up in my possession? And what even is it? Well, a brand called Yema, or Yema, or I'm not sure exactly how to pronounce it. They reached out via email asking to send one my way. One look at the product shot, and it was in the mail. You see, I've covered plenty of digital LCD watches before, but never an original LED one. Back in the 70s, before the advent of liquid crystal displays, there came these light emitting diode watches, or LEDs. This often forgotten technology requires an electrical charge to pass through a material like aluminium gallium in this case to become illuminated, hence the name. These LED watches are more power hungry than their LCD successors, so often require manual activation to display the time in an effort to conserve energy, as is the case with this Yema reissue. The original one that this appears to be based on is quite difficult to track down, I could only find a few photos of it on Google Images, though this reissue does appear to be a rather faithful recreation, which has its pros and its cons, as we'll see. These LED watches were often known to be somewhat larger than the LCDs which followed them. This model comes in with a diameter of 37.5mm, a thickness of 10.5 and a lug to lug of 42.3. While it sounds small, in reality the barrel shaped case results in the watch feeling larger on wrist, akin to a typical 41mm watch. On my small 15.5cm wrist, it doesn't look bad though. It is a touch large, though the standardised lugs don't leave any overhang, meaning it should fit a range of wrist sizes, including those of you with much larger wrists. It's a very simple, yet striking design, which is fun though not the most versatile for day to day usage. The large red crystal cuts straight through the middle of the brushed silver case with a slim high polish surround on either side. The flanks of the watch are also polished and the angular lugs fall off steeply, contributing further to that retro futuristic vibe. Branding is very limited with an etched Yema logo at the bottom center. But you'll find a more elaborate engraving on the case rear. This variant of the logo looks like some form of late medieval crest and has been done so precisely that the edges are a little sharp to the touch. It doesn't scratch your wrist or anything, but it does highlight the attention to detail. The case back itself is screw on, aiding the solid 100 meters of water resistance, which is more than enough for most people. Additionally, you'll be glad to know that this case is stainless steel, unlike many of the cheap digitals that you may already be familiar with. This will ensure better durability, and overall it makes the piece feel like a decent quality item. A statement that can't be said for many digital watches. Functionally, the proprietary LED quartz movement is very basic. The top pusher activates the LED display, which automatically turns off after a couple of seconds. Repeatedly compressing it will cycle you through the different display modes, such as the date and second counter. Unlike LCD watches, this tech doesn't accommodate the likes of timers or alarms, with the bottom button simply being used to edit the time or date. This lack of features, combined with a requirement for a free hand every time you want to view the time, negatively impacts the raw practicality of this watch, resigning it to fashion accessory status as opposed to something handy. In comparison, I've often found LCD watches to work better than this or a phone when you're in a rush. You can just look at your wrist and bam, you instantly have the time. That being said, it does a great job that form over function purpose. It's unusual how a wristwatch can look like it's from the 1970s and 2070s simultaneously but I think that's certainly the case here. Unlike some other reissues that we've reviewed, I think the design is very tastefully done, and the simplistic squared off profile holds up better than some of the alternatives, such as the Belova Computron reissue, which looks about as modern as this house did when I moved in. <laughs> There's something universally cool and punchy about the red glow of an LED that just can't be captured with grayscale LCD technology. It looks like it belongs in a neon sea with bright lights and hover bikes. You'd never think that almost 50 years after the original, this would look so futuristic. And as such, I have to credit Yemma's marketing department for conveying an accurate message. I showed this one to my dad and his face immediately lit up, a reaction that I think would be commonplace with this Yemma. Before receiving the watch, I was concerned that it may feel like a complete gimmick, given the obsolete technology. 
However, the careful execution just about elevates this into a higher bracket. Just so you know, there's also a gold version of this watch available too, though personally, I really like the silver one. From above, the bracelet fits the theme very well, with a slick horizontally brushed finish that integrates well with that on the main body. It also features a basic clasp with a small laser Yammer logo that is light enough to not spoil the aesthetic. While it looks great, unfortunately, the construction of it falls short. As you can see, it utilizes folded links, which tend to rip out arm hairs if you're not careful. While this wouldn't be worth complaining about on a cheap watch, this Yammer is currently retailing for $224, or about £165 when employing the current 10% discount code. So it's pretty difficult to pull that excuse. From what I can gather, this is either an attempt to match the exact look of the 70s watches or to cut costs, or I suspect perhaps a combination of both. While this is easily the best feeling folded link bracelet I've come across, and it is fully adjustable in a pinch, I still think it's an inexcusable compromise at this price point. A solid link bracelet could surely be implemented here and be modeled to provide the same aesthetic with a better level of comfort. Luckily, you can change this out for an alternative 20 millimeter band, though I was still hoping for more given how premium the watch looked in those stock images. The real question for me is, can a digital watch like this command such a high RRP? Compared to many digital watches that I've covered before, this is comfortably the priciest, sitting at close to triple the cost of the steel Casio A1000 series, which received a mixed review themselves. Well, here's my take on it. I think it's great that these are made in France for starters. I'm sure there are some technicalities to it, but if that means fewer questionable labor practices along the production chain, then that's a win in my books. The build feels solid, so I do think the watch will last well over time, though due to the nature of these watches, semi-regular battery changes will be required. It's great to have that water resistance too, as it just gives you one less thing to worry about. On the other hand, I'm not sure the finishing is quite sharp enough for me to part with my own money for this at retail price. While the case is rather angular, the transitions themselves aren't as precise as I hoped for, and the red crystal is also misaligned slightly, sitting a touch to the right. That's also only a mineral crystal, meaning scratches could be an issue further down the line, and when you step back to look at this watch on paper, it really is nothing particularly impressive. If this package was closer to £100, it would be more tempting for sure. It would also make for a more viable gift option, which would combine well with a decent leather case that the watch was delivered in. I think a lot of men would be thrilled to receive one of these as a gift, unless they discovered their wife had spent almost £200 on one. It is much cheaper than the crazy expensive Hamilton LED watch, though I haven't managed to obtain one of those for a proper comparison. Let me know your thoughts in the comments, subscribe for more, see you next time.